Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of Behind the Curtain for Absolute Intense Wrestling. I, of course, am Pedro DeLuca, and I am sitting here with the greatest women's wrestler in the world, the queen of professional wrestling, the one, the only, Sarah Del Rey. Sarah Del Rey, thank you for, so much for joining us here. Thank you. Are we shaking? Yes, we are shaking. Those mighty high praise. I'm so, well, it, it's the absolute truth. If you you've ever seen, it is the am absolute I? truth. Oh my you gosh, you're the serious. greatest <laughs> women's wrestler I have ever witnessed. Fantastic. Okay? Uh, I mean, I have a... I am totally marking out right now because this is awesome that I'm sitting here with Sarah Del Rey. When I say she's the greatest women's wrestler, if you do he not He has not on. seen a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, I, have, I have every volume but of I Shimmer. I, I have every good. volume of Shimmer. I have right. seen you all over the world. I have seen PWG, Ring of Honor, so yes. I think PWG, I, I was there, like their first show. I, hey, I have it, okay? I can guarantee you I've seen it. Okay. So, when I say it, you can take it to the bank because it is true. Now, Sarah, after now that I have inflated your ego immensely. Yeah. The whole purpose of these behind the curtains is to kind of get away from the ring and to find out who the person Sarah Del Rey is. Oh, I don't know so, if you're gonna like what you find out. Hey, that's what we're here for. That's yeah. what I want to know. Yeah. So Sarah, what was the moment in your life where you realized that professional wrestling is what you wanted to do? I don't know if I had that moment, moment but I remember um, I, I mean, obviously loving wrestling growing up, and there was just never a female role model, like, how I thought women should be, like, it was, I mean, Sable and Sunny and those kind of girls, which were great in their capacity and all that kind of stuff, but, and even Sharon more tell to a certain extent, but I really wanted, like, hard hitting style, like, okay. just, like, Chris Benoit and, like, you know, William Regal and all these types that were very technical and very, like, solid as well, and the women just had a different kind of air to them, so, um, I'm gonna get back to your question once I remember it. Okay, the just, story just, was going somewhere. Just, just you know, oh, you the William moment. Regal, the moment, yeah. Um, so I just kind of started um, after high school. I went to college and I didn't like it at all. I really didn't like high school, you know. I but I, you that. know, that's what you do. You go to high school, you go to college, you get into you know, do the deal. And I was like, maybe I'll just take a year off and like find myself and have some fun and like maybe be this wrestler I wanted to be. And I. Um, I didn't know anything about independent wrestling or anything like that. I just did some research and found a local school, which fortunately for me turned out to be all pro wrestling in okay. California, featured on Behind the Mat, Beyond the Mat, Beyond the Mat, and um, Behind the Curtain. Yeah, well, we're, we're dead so <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, um, which, I mean, as you saw from the movie, and it's like the trainers at the time, Mike Modest and Donovan Morgan, had just a very like, fantastic style, very like, um, technical wrestling, Japanese style, so they just kind of opened my mind up to all of this and let me know, like, the speech the first day when they were like, people just get in this for the money, I was like, you can make money doing this? Like, I had no idea, like, I just thought it'd be something really fun to do, so I guess that was kind of the moment, like, I knew that I had the heart to dedicate myself to it and be the very best I could be, but I didn't know it would pay off into a career or a job, but I was like, I'm never going to give that up. Like, if like, I could do that, I thought, like, man, that's what I was built for. Like, now, growing up, were you athletic in school? Did you have any athletic background that kind of prepared you for the training you were about to receive? Or was it a total I mean, shell shock in the first day? No and yes. I was always kind of tomboy. I played softball and I loved sports, but I was just very lazy and unmotivated and, you know, like awkward teenage years, like falling into bad circles and that kind of stuff and um, interestingly enough I failed PE in high school like, all four years I, I almost didn't graduate it was a, quite embarrassing I had to like make up classes at night school and like bowl like <laughs> it was really bad so uh, I, but I was just lazy I mean I was athletic and I love sports but nothing can prepare you for the kind of training you need for wrestling like, except since Donovan Morgan uh, was known in Japan more than here in the U.S., how was the, the style of the training? I mean, was it all Hindu squats and cardio, 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 bump, 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 or no. describe your training a little bit? I mean, we, I mean, there were definitely days where we did a lot of that, a lot of physical stuff, but for the first two weeks, it was just, we didn't even get in the ring. Um, it was just outside running drills, like just weeding out the people who didn't really want to be there and just seeing who would push themselves physically because that's all wrestling is. It's like who has it in them to push themselves physically and mentally. Um, so they were just weeding out people. So there were definitely days. And I mean, that wasn't just the first time because the course ran maybe 
three months and I, I was there for a year so I went through that many many times and obviously every day we not I'm not every day it was Tuesdays and Thursdays in the beginning and then eventually like four times a week doing all that kind of stuff. Now were you the only woman in training or was it just you against all the guys or was there other women training with you? No, there was um, cheerleader Melissa actually. Oh, wow. okay. She was never in like my class. She had already um, been doing all pro wrestling shows as a manager for the Ballard Brothers, but she lived in LA. So um, she was just kind of moving up to uh, the area, but she was okay. doing more of like the semi pro stuff. So she'd go in and like do more of the match stuff when we were just doing ba like we, they taught us amateur wrestling for like two weeks. like and just all kinds of stuff, like scratch, scratch, scratch. But I was the only girl, um, they had one girl they trained before, but she just wanted to be a manager, and I don't think she like, had her like, marbles on. Yeah, the fight's hard into it. Did you feel more pressure on you being a female training with all the guys, that you, you've got to outshine these guys? Did that help motivate you to become the best woman wrestler in the world? Or? No, I just didn't want to like hold them back because the class was so big I started and it had to be broken up into two different times, like the same day, just two different times. And which time worked out best for me was the, like kind of the more advanced guys were in. So I mean, I had to, I just had to keep up because I couldn't fall so behind. Rapid adapt, rapid yeah. adapt, okay. But I mean, I'd stay and watch the second class and you know, just watching the technical things because I'm a very like, I need to see things a million times to get it down. So I'd watch and they were not as far along as we were. And um, one time I heard the trainer, I think it was either Donovan or Bison Smith, it might have even been modest, but they're like, they couldn't do the bumps. We used to have to climb up to the second rope and jump off backwards, right? Terrifying. Terrifying even like when you're trained. But um, we, that class just couldn't get it. They'd get up there, get scared, not going be like, geez, even the girl can do it. No, like, that's right. So that just kind of motivated me to keep pace with those guys, and I was fortunate enough to have a really good group of guys. Now, training along those lines, how long did it take to you were able to wrestle your debut match? Over a year. Over a year? Okay. Yeah, but I didn't even, even when I wrestled my debut match, I was like, guys, I'm not ready. And they're like, you have to. It's just like, I don't, like, being in the ring is such a serious thing to me, and I mean, I just, I just didn't feel prepared, and I don't, I don't think, you're, they're like, you're never going to know everything, and I was like, I just I don't know enough yet, but it was over a year of training, I actually dislocated my kneecap and had to have surgery, so it was a few months off, and then when I came back, um, they were like, it's about time, but we, we used to have, like, light classes every, or light shows every Friday, um, and so they would have us just like amateur wrestling and try and shoot pins. We had this crazy Africa come up <laughs> She was kind of awesome. She was like legit crazy. And she was like little and she was very into her looks and stuff. She was super athletic. And uh, they, they kind of wanted to do a little angle and they're like, can you beat her in an, like a, a legit amateur match? I was like, no problem. Because she was much smaller than me and I thought like, you know, I trained with the guys. I'm like, Man, I, I mean, I won. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but it was hard. Now, moving on from your debut match, when did you really start to move to the Midwest, move to the East Coast? Because on the Midwest, East Coast, I mean, you're just the top name. I, I still am building up the ego, but it's all worthy and due. You know, big name from Shimmer Greenwater. When did you really start moving towards the East Coast? Date? I do not do it. That's, that's but, fine, but what some of the promotions that you work for to help open okay. the door for you? Definitely Shimmer, Ring of Honor, Chikara. I mean, when you think about East Coast wrestling, I mean, at least me, that's what I thought of. Okay. Um, coming from the West Coast, we didn't really like, but there's tons of wrestling. You know, so just getting out there and doing little things and just getting yeah. around. Coming from the West Coast, do you feel that there is an East Coast bias? Like, because London Publishing is from the East Coast and Pro Wrestling Illustrated, the wrestler, Inside Wrestling, do you feel that uh, wrestlers coming off the West Coast don't get the just do that people may be in like the New York area, New England, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan? I would say no, only because the people in the West Coast, there's not very many promotions or places to work to really get your name out there. Like, okay. even a, a company like PWG is probably the number one on the West Coast and uh, Oprah's name, but they're, you know, about eight hours apart. Um, 
maybe run shows once a month, maybe twice a month, and it's really hard where on the East Coast you can work multiple times a week. Yeah, so I think it's just harder because they're not, they don't get enough exposure because they don't have enough sources of, you know? As you're moving to the Midwest and you're, you're getting into the Shimmers, you're on the, the debut of Shimmer. You've been on, I believe, on every volume of Shimmer. Since Me and Cheerleader and Melissa. The only two. Yeah. Every volume. You were also... 40 volumes. Can you believe it? I couldn't believe it. You were also part of the main Ring of Honor roster. You, you were one of the staples of the quote-unquote Ring of Honor women's division. Did you have that kind of... Aurora, Aurora in the locker room that, what is this girl doing in our locker room? Or was you, did you establish yourself enough that I can whip any of you guys in here, so back up? Um, no, really, because I feel like I'm respected enough to not okay. have to, like, throw that out there. Like, I think that's kind of desperate, you know, to, like, expect all this stuff. But I think just naturally people respect me and my ability. And, I mean, it's not like any old chick would just wander back and be like, oh, uh, but, but did that kind of answer your question? Yeah, I, I guess I was more, you know, because Ring of Honor is known for such a fast, tent paced hard-hitting style, and, you know, did the fans accept the women wrestlers, or was there just kind of like, why is there a I don't really know. I don't know. Really, I know definitely towards the end, maybe not so much in the division. I don't even know what time you're referring to. Because I didn't think there was days. not like a women's division. There was me, Lacey, and Daisy for a long time. And we kind of had matches and never like, I, I wouldn't really consider it a division. Okay, because really, so. the shimmer was kind of like the offshoot. There you go. Okay. That was like our Now, because Ring of Honor has kind of shied, shied away from women's wrestling, do you feel that, hey, we have a place on the card too, we don't need to just be I round ringside that we should have a match too. Do you think they need to go back to that? Or say no, it's good for them. No, just kidding. No, like, what? That's a good I, answer. <laughs> I mean, there's, I, for me personally, as a fan, when I watch something in Ring of Honor, such a specific style, it's, um, I don't know, I think the female touch is lacking just okay. to diversify the program a little. Um, in my personal opinion, but I mean, not all fans like women's wrestling, so maybe. I don't know, that's my opinion. We brought you from to the Midwest, the, the East Coast, and rec in recent years we have seen kind of a proliferation of all women. I don't know what that word means. Lots of, lots of We've just seen a lot of all women's wrestling groups pop up, yeah. trying to follow the model of Shimmer. Now, some are a lot more respected than others, and some are just glorified TNA, or, you know, TNA acts. Not, not the wrestling company, but actual TNA. But uh, how do you feel about those women? Do you think it demeans women's wrestling, and it's kind of destroying what you're trying to put out there? Or is there a niche for everybody? Like, I'm not some martyr for the women's wrestling group. For, and really, it's kind of sad, like... The girls come in, they don't want to work hard, I can care less because they're going to weed themselves out and that really has no bearing on me. I just wish women in general all over the board would respect themselves more. I just say that. And not only in wrestling, but just put some clothes on. So not only just put your clothes, I don't want to let that linger because it's not just put some clothes on, but like women are objectified and we let it happen and a lot of women like feed on that. So I just think women as a whole need to change. In some of our other behind the curtains, I've asked uh, other women wrestlers, does it hurt your feelings or just anger you when you see like Playboy models come in, bikini models that have no idea what the wrestling business is about? and maybe like taking a spot that you should have in one of the major promotions that's on national promotion. But it's not a spot I would have, you know what I mean? Like, I don't see it that way because, I mean, they're given an opportunity. I mean, if someone comes to you and is like, I know you have no idea how to do this, but I will pay you to learn and do the best job that uh, you can. Like, of course you're gonna try and like, try really hard and I'm sure they're, I mean, so you hold no grudges against No, because that is models. not the spot I would 
want. Like, is that I, a spot you aspire for? Would you like I, to be in WWE? I would definitely like to be in WWE, but that's not my spot as a model, you know? Right. And, like, I'm not comfortable, like, as a person in that role, so I don't feel like they're taking my spot. Or, like, they can only have so many. Like, I think the more models there, the better, because that makes me stand out for them. So, do you have a specific goal for the future for yourself? Or would you rather just like stick to Japan or make Shimmer as big as you can make it? Or do you want to go in and prove to WWE that the fans really want to see wrestling? They don't want to see the lingerie matches, the, the bra and panty matches. I think that's already been proven and I love Shimmer in Japan and everywhere I've wrestled. It's been great, even in the independence and um, like I just get such a tremendous amount of support from fans which I wouldn't have without the independence, but I'd definitely like to be in WWE one day, just reach a broader audience and like show them that not all, all the women have to be that. Uh, is it easier to perform on the independence because you are so well known and people expect to see actual wrestling out of you and not the TNA shows and the, and the gimmick matches, but you can go out there, and you said you didn't want to be the martyr, but you've pretty much become the martyr of women's wrestling. I mean, you, you are quite possibly the best well-known women's wrestler on the independent circuit. Is it okay for you to pick up that banner and say, let's change this? It's not well, it is what it is. <laughs> if you can't tell, I really want Sarah Del Rey to be the face of women's wrestling. If you can't tell I, that already. But I already am. I want it on. I want it on a global scale. I want to, yeah, I want to turn. I want to turn on Monday, uh, Mondays, Thursdays, Fridays, and see Sarah Delray because I am tired of the the fourteen woman two minute matches that we've been seeing constantly. But Not better at all. Let me tell you, if it took me more than two minutes to beat any of those girls, I have a problem. So. If I were there, you'd still be getting two minute matches. No, I, I don't want to stick on WWE because I could go for hours on WWE. Let's get back to the independence, where you okay. are the queen. Okay? Yeah. You've been in with the AIW several times now. Uh, what are your opinions on AIW? I love AIW. As far as like Ohio, Cleveland area, like this is like the and every time I come back, the fans are more into it. Like the company is just built and grown. I don't. Even remember the first time I came in, it must have been like four or five years ago. It's, it's been, been a several while. years. It's, it's been, been a while. Years, yes. And like just to see it grow and like the people running it like are doing a good job, obviously. And like I don't know, it's great that the fans are like coming to support and just seeing the company put on great shows like this and giving the women the opportunity to shine in their own spotlight. It's just it's awesome. So uh, I'm gonna go back to your goals for the future here. Continue with AIW, continue with the independence. We're gonna, we are going to make Sarah Del Rey the face of women's professional wrestling. Let's, do it, Let's do it, people. Let's do it. Get on Twitter. Hashtag. Get on Facebook. We are going to make this happen. Well, Sarah, I would like to thank you for joining us here from Behind the Curtain. I know I've been enlightened. I've been marked out like crazy for you. I, I'm sure my cameraman is enjoying it greatly because he likes to make fun of me afterwards. But Sarah, thank you for joining us. Thank Best you. of luck to you in the future. And again, this get, get, get a close-up on this cameraman. This is going to be the face of professional wrestling if I have my way and if you have your way. You are the fans. You make them the decisions. Make this the face. Thank you for Hashtag make this the face. There we go.